all the buttons. Yep, you're ready to go. Okay. Good evening, the appointed hour of five o'clock p.m. having been reached, I welcome everyone to the meeting of the Amherst Design Review Board. My name is Catherine Porter, and as chair of the Amherst Design Review Board, I call the meeting to order. And uh, at this time, I would like to take attendance. Uh, Tom Long, apparently not here. Lindsay Schnarr, not here. Uh, Becky Lockwood. Here. Present. Okay. Uh, Eric Azikos. Here. Okay. And Catherine Porter. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, GIC 30A section 18 and the governor's March 15, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. This public hearing of the Town of Amherst Design Review Board is being conducted via remote participation. And I should say some of that uh, those restrictions have been lifted, but we at this time are still meeting via Zoom. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but the public can attend tonight's virtual meeting by using the Zoom login information provided on the meeting agenda listed on the meeting calendar, which is provided on the Town of Amherst website. Okay. Also in attendance is Maureen Pollock, planner and staff liaison to the Design Review Board. The Design Review Board and its accompanying zoning regulations were created by the town meeting in October of 1983. The charge and purpose of the Design Review Board under section 3.2 of the zoning bylaw is to preserve and enhance the town's cultural, economic, and historical resources by providing for a detailed review of all changes in land use, the appearance of structures, and the appearance of sites which may affect those resources. The Design Review Board exercises this responsibility by providing design review and recommendations to private applicants and permit granting boards within specific overlay zoning districts in the town center, the design review overlay district, and the town common design review overlay district. Design review was also provided for town departments and permit granting boards with respect to town projects anywhere in Amherst, which will result in substantial alteration to the form or appearance of a structure or site. All design review board meetings are open to the public and are recorded by town staff. Each meeting recording will be uploaded to the Town of Amherst YouTube channel for public viewing. The procedure is as follows. The petitioner presents the application to the board during the meeting, after which the board will ask questions for clarification or additional information. After the board has completed its questions, the board will deliberate if the board feels it has enough information and time, it will decide upon recommendations for each respective application. Once the board has voted on its recommendations, the staff liaison will type up the recommendations for distribution to the applicant board, applicable land use board and building commissioner. And so tonight we will have several agenda items and Maureen, which one is going to come first? Unitarian Universal Society of Amherst. And as full disclosure, I wanna say I'm a member of this group, uh, but I do not think that this applicant's application or applicant is uh, going to uh, be in any way controversial. So I'll hand it over to- Oh, and uh, I think Becky has raised her hand. Becky, it's also- I, I wanted to add that I too am a member of the group. So- um, <laughs> And I, I am too. Other, <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So Erica and Maureen, you wanna join? <laughs> uh, so, I mean, do you, both of Catherine and Becky, do you feel that you can, you know, review the proposal? Oh yeah, the definitely. Opinion? Yeah, I know what it's about and it's- do I? <laughs> yes, yeah, okay. I, I think I think. Yeah. Well, let, um, let's take a look at and if you want to sure. look back about that, that's fine. okay. 
Okay. So if Becky, uh, if you are able to share your screen or I could share mine. Suzanne. Uh, Susan. Oh, sorry. Oh, no. Yeah, Suzanne. Sorry. 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 Oh, did you need me to? I, I don't have this. <laughs> I, I don't have these things up. I'm sorry. Um, but let me see. I can probably share my screen. Um, okay. Let's see. Sorry, Maureen. I wasn't quite ready for that. Um, all right. Share that. Um, now you're going to see my backyard. Um, Let's see, it's in here. I can just share my screen um, to make this faster. Okay, that would probably be a good idea because I'm not really quite ready for it. So sorry about that. Apologies. Okay, so. so basically, while Maureen is putting this together, um, uh, when we did, when the USA did the um, major renovation and addition to the building in 2013 and 2014, um, we evidently, I wasn't part of it at that point, possibly Catherine was, I don't know about Becky, um, but uh, we couldn't afford to re shingle the existing um, 1893 building. And so um, we painted it and cleaned it up and, and you know, put the addition on, um, which was intended to match the, what we thought were the original shingles on, on the building, which had what's called an, a, an, a 10 inch exposure Exposure refers to the amount of the shingle that you actually see. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar with it, yeah, this is a good picture. If you can okay. kind of zoom in on um, on that, that the, the photograph. And so um, you can see on the on the, the left how big. I don't know if can you see my cursor. Probably not, but you can see that the 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 courses the shingles are fairly wide. Okay. Oh. And um, if you can go to the other one, what we discovered when we found photographs from 1923 was that actually the original was a was was more like this. This is a this is a, an architect's rendering of the shingles with what's called a five inch exposure. And so we decided that it would be better, even though the new part of the building has a nine or ten inch exposure, that it would be fine to have the old part reflect its original design, which was a, a shingle style kind of building and very, very tight coursing like that was quite typical of that time period. We actually found that when you go into this little entryway, which we don't use really anymore, but was the original entrance to the building, um, that inside there, the people in 1923 or 24 didn't replace those shingles either, pro probably to save money, we guess, <laughs> because they're protected by the weather. But you can see that, yes, they were indeed, we could measure them. They're actually five inches uh, to the weather. So, so that's what we'd like to propose to do. We're gonna um, restore as much of the detail as we can. Um, okay, uh, Maureen, if you could go to the historic photograph, uh, black and white. Oh, well, there we go, let me zoom in. Um, you can see these are these very, very narrow shingles again. Um, and there are some details here. The, the entrance was replaced at some point and made into something a little more attractive than that one. Um, and some of the detail on the tower got taken off at some point. We don't know exactly when. Uh, there was, we know that there were water infiltration problems um, with the tower. And I think those little pseudo balconies up there were probably the cause of that. So they got rid of those. But there is this over what is now the angel window. Um, there is a little bit of a lip um, that's kind of a water drip um, that comes down the front face. We're going to replace that, and it'll look a lot more like this um, when we are done. So you could go back to the ar architect's, yeah, the architect's rendering, I guess. Um,
you're fortunate to find these photographs. So, um, so this, these are the, the working drawings that basically show us, um, this is the Kellogg Street side that shows, I'm sorry, the alley side that shows us um, with the ramp and the, the old building, there's only a little bit of the new shingling sh showing, and then the, uh, the addition to the, kind of from the gable on over. Um, okay, and then the next one, um, this is the east elevation um, toward the parking lot. This is all new, except for a little tiny peak at the tower, although you'd never really see it because this is an architect's rendering and it's not, it, it's so far in the, far in the few in the head of you that you couldn't see it from the parking lot but it's it's what it, you the architects the way we look at it okay the next one um there should be four this is the kellogg street side you can see the entrance with a little porch um, on the far left and then so this is where the most of the um the new show well actually this in the the angel window elevation, but you see the tower tower has been really simplified to make it more watertight so we will replace the shingles inside the front porch go ahead that's good this time, <laughs> so that now that they're 100 years old, uh, or at least 100 years old, and so this is the uh, how it will look from um, North Pleasant Street, this is our angel window in the middle here so. Um, so we are replacing some of the corner details. Um, my, as much as we could do, there's a, a wrapping detail that, um, that you, you can do with the smaller shingles um, around each corner rather than having them butt, you have them wrap, and, and, and it's kind of hard to explain. But, um, and then there was a detail at the roof eave that um, we're replacing too, where it kind of turns up over the roof. So, so we're trying to keep it, pick up as much of the historic detail as we can and uh, improve its preservation qualities, basically. Um, so this is about a $250,000 project. The congregation has had to borrow money to do it, but the shingles at 125 years old are really, they've had their, their lifespan. They're ready for, to be replaced. They are on the edge of leaking. So we, we wanna start on September 1st. That's it. Any questions? Okay, let's see. Um, any? Uh, I'll go to you, Erica, since you're the only non-member non <laughs> here. <laughs> well, I um, first, I mean, I'm I'm all for it. I think it's a um, going to be really beautiful and appreciate the historic accuracy. Um, although, Susan, you you mentioned that. Um, when you were uh, introducing us to the to the um, images, um, you said that um, a lot of the historic detail would be um, restored or or you know attempt to restore it. And I'm I'm not seeing that much difference. I, I realize that maybe yeah, there's yeah there's there's I've said a lot I, I misspoke. I, I'm I, also I'm just curious that there was something that we're missing because there is already um, with the, the the new window um, that beautiful um, lip, yeah, um, around, right. So that that remains. That's not yeah. new. Yeah. Uh, you're not no, restoring the arch detail over the tower windows or additional apertures in the tower. Is there anything that we're missing? Just so you said it would look much different. I. It well, to my, to my architect's eye, it looks much different um, in terms of uh, going from the much bigger shingles to the much smaller okay. shingles. But if that's if that's it, then I'm I'm. Well, it's that. I want to make sure that there wasn't something else. There are there are a couple subtle details. There were not a whole lot of details on the building to start with, but that lip, um, yeah. we are actually there. It has kind of a scalloped edge to it on the original. We're going to replace that. Um, at the eave where the roof meets the, the front of the building at that, that big steep um, roof pitch, um, we are going to wrap the shingles around. There's a detail to, to wrap those. Uh, at the tower, we're going to um, interlace the shingles rather than butt joint them. These are all subtleties that, that we're, we're trying to pick up as many of the details as we could afford basically. 
Um, you know, in an ideal world, I'd love to redo the tower, um, but that's, you know, it's hard to justify spending money on doing that when. Sure. No, thank you for this clarification. It's just when yeah. you, know, you, yeah, both, you no. talked about both subtle details and then also use the word much different. And I, yes, 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 yes. I recognize okay. the subtle, the importance of those subtle details. I'm 100% <laughs> for this. I have no recommendations. Okay. Good question. So thank you. I appreciate that. So uh, most people probably won't notice at all. It will be the same color yeah, as the rest color. of the building. Um, and um, so it's, it, it is very subtle. So is there a preservative put on uh, or a stain or a preservative added to the shingles to give them a longer life, so to speak? Well, getting 125 years out of a set of shingles is extraordinary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, usually you would say 30 to 40 years, maybe. So we have gotten a lot out of what, what we had. Um, but to answer the question, we are putting a, um, a, 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 a semi-transparent stain. Maybe it is a fully, fully opaque stain. It, it's the same material that we put on um, the rest of the building and that was on there now, basically. Uh -huh. So um, it is considered a way to seal the cedar to protect it from um, weathering. Uh -huh. so, but cedar is by, by its nature, uh, weathering, I mean, you know, our New England landscape is full of naturally weathered cedar everywhere. All the stuff you see, particularly on the Cape Cod, you know, that's all you see everywhere. Um, and that's because it's, it's got a lot of oil in it. It's a very hard, hard, oily wood. So it, it's, uh, it lasts much better than other wood. So, but yeah, we're doing everything we can to do that. Becky, do you have any questions or comments? You're muted. I feel I, I feel like I, I don't want to I feel like I shouldn't comment because of being a member. Um, well, you can comment. I can. Well, that's not, not, not for me to say, but I'm glad to take your comments. Yeah, <laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> it's really more. I, I think I think it's fine that you comment. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. I'm fine with it. I love the idea that you're doing as much as you can to um, keep that historic look. And from, from a, a historical perspective, you know, that's excellent. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. You know, I'll just chime in. I think, I mean, the, the church is so unique to the downtown. And um, I think the town should uh, express an appreciation for the fact that putting so much money into maintaining this really special and elegant uh, meeting house. So uh, yeah, I totally feel, feel lucky that you're doing it. Uh, so any other, any other comments before we have a vote to approve? Do I hear a motion that we approve this applicant? So moved. Okay, is that Erica, is there a second? <laughs> Becky? <laughs> second. Okay, all right. Uh, any further discussion or questions? All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Okay, aye. No, no opposition. All right, <laughs> carry on. It's Thank you very great. much. You'll start yeah, to see sure. stuff going on there <laughs> shortly in yeah. the next couple of weeks. Okay. So, okay. all right. Thanks very much. And I'll get something more in from you about this. So yeah. and, you, and you send it on to the the uh, building inspector. So, yeah, um, I uh, will pass it on to Jen Mullins and in, okay. in the next day or so. Okay, okay, because that's the the building permit um, that is going to pull get pulled by the contractor will be the next thing. So they need this. Gotcha. For them. Okay, great. Good. All right, thank you all. All right, thank Have you. Good rest of your meeting. Bye bye. Bye bye. Let's see. What do we and have next? next on the agenda is for the Oyster, Amherst Oyster Bar to review the proposed roof replacement for the for the bar. Um, the uh, the DRB reviewed um, their designs for their exterior. I feel like a couple months ago. Yeah, um, like feels like a couple months ago. Um, and so uh, I believe the only changes is to the roof. But we have uh, Dylan here who can. Um, 
help um, shed some light on what 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 you guys are proposing. Okay. All right. Welcome and. Thank you, Maureen. Yeah, thank you for uh, hearing me this evening. I'm going to share my screen. I have a little presentation for you guys. All right. Can you see my screen now? Yes. All right. All right. So yeah, we met uh, a few months back and got approval to move forward. Since uh, the time to move fo that we moved forward, we opened up uh, the inside of what used to be Judy's and found a lot of water damage. A lot of that water damage occurred from the uh, the roof, the sunroom, and the front side of Judy's. Um, there was structural damage that, uh, as we continued to open up that uh, the walls and the floors, uh, it kind of proved to be uh, beyond just repairing and something that we'd have to totally fix and replace. Um, so this is the existing building. Uh, as you can see, this is what we approved uh, back in early summer. And our new proposal uh, changes the facade a little bit. It opens up uh, in front, provides a little bit more uh, of an extension of the uh, one parapet that was located right here that we had discussed. Uh, and other than that, uh, the sign is new across the front of the windows, and you'll notice we have removed the signs that were on either side of uh, the primary logo. And so this is this is my attempt at doing an artist uh, rendering. I'm not very artistic, so I do have some architectural drawings that kind of uh, show the details a little bit better. Um, so this is the existing uh, building, uh, what was Judy's, uh, and you can see the front uh, facade right here. And you can see um, the parapet right here that would get extended across the entire width of uh, the building front. And so the glass roof would go away um, and we would take the opportunity, we we're taking the opportunity to change that facade and kind of make it singular uh, as we will have to replace the beams and the floors uh, inside the space. And so the next slide here is showing you what it will look like. You can see that extension across. So creep creates this uniformity look across the entire space. And just two up close looks at uh, what it'll look like. So I'll stop there and see if you guys have any questions. Uh, if not, okay. that was the presentation. Yeah. Do you have a uh, uh, two slides that, that we can put together to compare the original plan with your new plan. Um, uh, I can do something quickly here, I believe. I'll do exteriors. Yeah, okay, that's that's the new one. Yep. Yeah. The new one, that's... Uh, yeah. One second, let me pull up the other one that was approved. Okay, yeah, that's... I'm trying to... And... Okay. You can kind of see it side by side here. One second, let me minimize that. Okay, okay, that helps. And so you're doing this because you had to repair the roof or this design will uh, mean that there's less likelihood that there will be roof issues. Or so when, yeah, when opening, when opening up, uh, you'll see in, in the front here, if I switch to, I think this next slide is gonna be the best look right here. Um, so this was existing, this is existing Judy's and this uh -huh. is the glass right here. Uh, a lot of the water is coming off of this kind of getting in between each one okay. of these individual panels and it was pooling. Um, there are posts that are located right here on either side of the dining room and water is running through that in the middle as well as on the front, every single one of these posts uh, were rotted. So we have to replace the uh, replace both of the posts as well as the boards. And as we were pulling that back and pulling back the floor, uh, we realized that there was an opportunity actually for the interior of the space. You can see uh, this is existing Judy's with a lower sunroom level. It used to take a ramp down. Uh, we found an opportunity to raise it so there's a singular floor uh, to make it more accessible in the space. Uh, and with doing that, it kind of 
uh, we didn't want to replace the glass in the sunroom again because we didn't want to run into this water issue problem down the road. Yeah. Uh, and so part of that was replacing is is we will have to replace the roof. And how do we replace the roof in a manner that uh, looks good for the facade and uh, kind of consolidates what used to be two single family homes that were never really kind of married together. If you look at the old exterior of Judy's, you can kind of see here, um, this used to be the old entryway um, back when this was Judy's just as the single family home over here. Uh, and this would have been what Barcelotti's was with a drive aisle right, right between. Yeah. And so um, you'll notice what we're trying to do is try to kind of create this uniformity, take that parapet across uh, and kind of merge the buildings two single family homes that they were. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, from the board, questions, comments, Becky or Erica, anything that uh, you'd like further? Just from, just from the look of it, it's so much more attractive. It's cleaner. Um, that you know, I wasn't involved in the original um, discussions about this, but just I mean, you have to replace the roof, and I think it looks fine. It's good to have your comments because you're a fresh voice on this, and Eric and I have seen it before. Erica, do you have any uh, thoughts? Yeah, I actually I agree with Becky. I think that it's um the the unifying nature of pulling that. Uh, cornice line across is really fantastic and I was um when I only when I first saw the new rendering I thought boy this could really use some detail but here in the architectural elevation drawing we can see that you've maintained and extended that kind of dental right the the um kind of toothed uh detail across the um across the fascia and then below the windows, we see a kind of panel detail on the on the tower portion. Um, and I, I really appreciate that you've you've kind of listened to us the first time around and incorporated that into into this pass. So I'm I'm all for it. I think it looks nice. Yeah, yeah. I actually I I ha tend have to agree. It's a little cleaner. The original or the one we've approved. Uh, was attractive, but it was a, got a little on the business <laughs> side. But this really, uh, I think, has a different, totally different impact. And um, yeah, so um, I think it's going to uh, be really good. And uh, yeah. That's and, it's great to hear that. And yes, that was um, the feedback from the original go around was part of what led to the discussion with the architect and taking that opportunity, so. Yeah, good, um, okay. Appreciate it. All right, any other uh, thoughts you wanna pass on? If not, do I hear a motion that we approve this applicant for the changes to the Amherst Oyster Bar? Erica, would you like to- Sorry, move? there's some dogs coming off in the house. Um, <laughs> And I actually have to confess that I, I missed your last. Okay, I was uh, going to ask uh, if we could have a motion to approve this. Oh, <laughs> yeah, glad to uh, make okay. a motion to approve right. the updated uh, plans as submitted. Okay, and Becky, would you be I happy? I second that, though. Okay, all right. So moved and seconded. Any further questions or discussions? Uh, if not, indicate by saying aye. Aye. We're a small group here. <laughs> We're small but mighty. <laughs> we love your oyster bar. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. Yeah. Thanks. Ellen, what's the what's your timeline? Uh, so we're thinking we're thinking end of uh, the winter into spring of twenty three. Um, oh, the amount okay. of water damage we found, we had to we gutted the entire oh. inside of Judy's. Right. It's a uh, it's totally taken apart. Oh dear. Uh, but it, it's wow. given us this opportunity to kind of come back with a right. fresh feel right. and it'll be totally new and we're really excited to open it. Yeah, that's exciting. That's we can't wait. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Good luck. So next, um, we um, have, I'm making the next person a panelist, so bear with us. 
And Lindsay's joining us. Oh, good. There's Lindsay. Hi. So sorry. Hello. Okay. So the next item is the person. Uh, hold on a second. Did the person come up as a? Okay, they're coming up right now. I think. Um. Okay, so the next um, application is for Adams and Ruxton Construction to review the proposed exterior light fixtures adjacent to the existing Bank of America ATM located at 75 East Pleasant Street. And so, hi there. If you could state your name and your sort of uh, your affiliation with the applicant, and then if you can share your screen and screen and and show and explain your proposal, that would be great. Oh, we can't hear you. Hmm. But you're not muted. Can't see him either. Oh, I, I can see him. Can you, you not see him? We, we don't see it, no. Yeah. Oh, wait. Can you hear me now? Oh, we yeah. hear you. Okay, sorry. Do you, you hear me well? Yes. Yes, okay. we can hear you. I'm Joseph Broussard. I'm a project manager with Adams and Ruxton. Um, and we're going to be looking to potentially update the lighting around one of the um, Bank of America drive throughs yeah, the ATM, yeah. Um, so do you want me to share my screen and show you the plan drop sure. in? Yeah, let's see what you have. Let me see if I can manage this here. This is a little different than uh, I, I can share my screen if that's easier. Okay. You can share from your side. Mm -hmm. Can everyone see this? Uh -huh. Thank you for that. Yeah, so the, the red box, you can see the red box uh, north of the of the ATM. That's going to be the one only addition to the lighting structure that, that's on place now. That'll be a new light, so we'll have to trench across for that, um, do some subgrade work. But the rest of the remaining lights are just going to remain as they are. They're just going to be upgraded um, for greater efficiency and, and a, a better um, uh, photometric illumination cast out. Um, that's really all we're doing. We're not really changing any other physical features of the site. Um, it's really just a, 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 an exterior lighting package upgrade. So, um, so uh, I guess we'll start with the the new light poles and then the replacement light poles. Is it right. is, is it this uh, spec here? Yes. And then do they um, have the same height or new heights? Um, I believe the new, well, the new one, obviously, I believe the new one may be a little bit higher, but I believe the rest of them are all at the same height. Let me, uh, I believe it's all the yeah. same height in there. It should stay right on the front. I just said it's right here. Cool. You got it? I believe they're all there. Is it in here? If you scroll, if you scroll to the right side there, it should have it. Uh, pull not replacing this at existing same height. Yeah. I'm going to call that. And the new one will be, tw this is the representing the new light pole, and that will be 12 feet. Correct. AFG, a I don't know what that means. Above finished grade. Oh, okay. uh, so, right. It'll, that 12 feet will be the height as you approach it from, from ground level. So, we got this one. And they're all the same specs. They're all the same light fixture type. Correct. The only ones that are different are the smaller ones that are actually inserts. That one there that goes into the canopy itself. Um, same locations as the existing lights in the canopy. Okay. So you're not changing the style of the light. Is that what you're? You're just. The main thing is you're adding a new light. Correct. We're, we're upgrading yeah. the. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And these all appear to, um, these ones appear to be dark sky compliant, meaning they're downcasted and shielded. And this is this, how is this ter um, tilting down? I believe that's, that's, I don't know why they, I don't know why they show that picture like that. That's almost like a recessed can, like yeah, it's flush through the side of the canopy. Yeah. Oh. Right. Okay. Are there questions about this lighting application? 
from the board. Uh, Lindsay or Erica or Becky, anybody? Do we have an image of what the existing fixtures look like? I don't have any imagery of the existing fixtures. Um, I think because one thing that we've talked a lot about is trying to make trying to establish some level of consistency with lamp posts. Sure. Um, and so I'm just curious yeah. what the what the surrounding lamp posts look like. Um, Maureen, that was helpful. If you could go back to that street view. Yeah. Can you, uh, oh, sorry, I'm trying to be fancy here. Hold on a second, it's not working, Never mind. You're doing uh, way you better second? than I could have done. Um, okay, that, I don't know what I did with it, sorry. Uh, here it is. Can you see two windows or just, I'm just one? I'm seeing window? a PDF still. See the one. Oh, you know why? Because I have it in a different share, sorry. Uh, oh, I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing, but um, can you see this? I'm just seeing the same PDF. Oh, okay. How about this? There you go. Yeah. So, if you could just kind of march down the road um, to see kind of oh, okay. what's existing and what what's to be replaced and what's going to stay the same. Yeah. So it's all these these types um, related to the bank. That's the old um, light pixtures. And then are you talking about, are you curious about street lights here? Um, here's the town's yeah. light picture here. Like that one, yeah. Yeah, yeah they, won't, like, they won't look like that light fixture. No, I, I know, I'm just curious. But could they? Me. Yeah, that's I, a question. Um, do we have any others in that? If you go back up to the field, to the Bank of America. Get one right here. So I guess I'm wondering mostly about that one. It's in the corner of like Primo. Um, yeah. Same. But right behind the building. I don't know how close you can get in that parking lot. But there's one right there. Yeah. That's a floodlight. That's, that? That's a little different. Okay. I mean, personally, I, I don't have, um, can we go back to the plan view and see exactly which locations are? I wonder, I mean, I wonder what other people think, but if, so are those two locations, wait, one, two, three, four, there's five locations where you're replacing them and then you're adding one. Um, I, mean, I guess the, the first thing I would say is like, let's make sure that all the all the lamp posts in that in that area are all. I mean, if, if I guess if there's going to be two different species, there already are. Um, I don't have a, a huge issue with it. I just wouldn't want to have like a couple of random ones that don't get switched out that are part of that same. I understand what you're saying. Second species. <laughs> um, so I would just try to make sure that there aren't any stray other existing um, lampposts that don't get updated. Um, that being said, it, it might be helpful to match the finish of the, like the black I don't, um, of the, the, the Amherst Street lampposts. Um, but I'm not. I'm not really all that concerned about it. I'd be curious to hear what other people have, what other people think about it. I think, as long as they're all consistent um, within that parking lot, I, I think it's fine personally. I would tend to agree. I think um, the new fixture is considerably less conspicuous than the existing, um, and. If, if black is a finish option for these, I think that that would be the way to go. Uh, yeah. If not, I would 
say these are are fine as long as in complete agreement with Lindsay, um, all Bank of America related on site fixtures are changed. So if you've identified five plus a new one, that that's everybody. That's everybody. Yes. Yeah. And I, I could I could reach out to the electrician who spec them all and see if there is a black finish and maybe send that back across your bow to see if that that works. I really don't know what yeah. the what the optimal right. real. And I think the pole itself, right, would be uh, would be good if it could be black. I think that's what I'm getting that people we'd like to see as much black. <laughs> On the fixture as possible, the pole and the lamp, lamp if possible. <clears throat> okay, any other uh, comments about this? Um, one one last thing is just the temperature of the light. Do you happen to have any information on that? Um, only because they can start getting really blue and odd. Hang on one second. LEDs. I don't know, Marine, is there any requirement from the town to uh, request that all any lighting poles be black? Uh, no. just to blend in with the uh, town the concept of the black might not be a bad idea oh just one more thing so what are we waiting for i couldn't get, i couldn't find anything on the actual um of gas and heat um, okay i believe there'll be you know far better at maintaining than what's currently there because all the new lights tend to be that way. They tend to be a lot more um, low, out, low, low output that way for efficiency. So it's typically less heat. Um, yeah, no, I'm not uh, not about heat. I'm talking more about color um, rendering. So oh, 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 uh, oh. LEDs have like a range of warm to cool color I understand. rendering. Uh -huh. And um, I would just say if it could, um, you know, I think it makes sense for it to be somewhere in the neutral zone if possible. Um, okay. I don't think it needs to necessarily be particularly warm, although that is nicer. Um, the cooler will probably emit more light, but once you get closer to like the 5,000 Kelvin end of the spectrum, it starts to get really blue and that can be kind of off-putting. So I don't know what other people think about that, but I would just yeah. recommend sticking more to like the 3,500 range if possible. Okay. okay. Any other thoughts, Becky? Did you have any? Okay. Erica, are you okay with how yes. this is progressing? I am. Okay. I, right. I, I move to approve with recommendations. <laughs> okay. Is there a second? Uh, Lindsay? I'll second. Okay. Oh, Becky, I'll second again. Okay. All right. All right. Didn't get the mute off fast enough. That's right. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, if there are no further discussion or questions, uh, we'll vote. Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Any op op anybody opposed? Our small band here. Okay. Very good. So uh, we've given you the our best thoughts on that. Are you okay with it? Me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Very Just good. to make clear the recommendations so I can push those forward. Okay. Uh, well. So match the um, the town of uh, the town of Amherst uh, light fixtures and poles adjacent to um, 
the Bank of America property to make sure they're all blacked. Um, all blacked. Yeah, and then uh, make Just sure the that finish, um, right? Not the, the light itself. Yeah. Right, oh, right. yeah. Thank you. The black light uh, finish. Yep. Yep. And then all Bank of America uh, uh, light fixtures. Um, like if you forgot about one, they should uh, be upgraded to to match uh, the light I, picture type. I can drive that property tomorrow and look for stragglers. I don't believe there are any. Um, so my next question then is, if I do go forward and I can't get this in black, <laughs> let's say the light cast as far as hot cold for uh, for tone is 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 leaning one way heavy, one way the other. Would I reach out to you, Maureen? Will we do this again? Or, uh, I mean, how, how does that work? Uh, why don't you email me the what uh, what is possible and we can take okay. it from there. But, um, and I, I'll, I'll pass that information along of what the board recommended. And, uh, but it would be important for the building inspectors to know what, what um, can be provided for the, the color temperature. Excellent, yes. Okay, okay. very good. All right, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Much, okay. Thanks. Okay, Maureen, is there any other? Are we yes. finished? Uh, no, no, we're not finished. Wait, oh, okay. but there's more. Okay. Uh, we're going to do uh, elections of the officers and approval of the meeting minutes. Okay. And then if anyone from the public decides to show up, uh, we can okay. do a general public comment period. Okay. Bye. Okay. Thanks. Um, so what I, uh, oh, so election, I guess we'll start for the election of officers. Um, so we need to elect, um, the chair and the vice chair, um, or I think we just have a chair for this board. So, um, Catherine, you've been a chair for a few years. I have. Years? Yeah. And, you remember, uh, Lindsay, how I became chair. I do. <laughs> it was wow. very, uh, on the spot. You were just. Boom. Uh, you do it. <laughs> I think I vaguely remember that. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you've done great. So, uh, would anyone um, be a chair like, or like to like, nominate? Yeah. I would nominate Erica if uh, she's interested. <laughs> um, can we talk a little bit about terms, though? I mean, I'm in the, um, I'm in the last. So, don't we have like six years? I think you might be I... the only member that's like valid, to be honest. <laughs> um, I don't know if you guys saw my email. Oh, no. Oh, maybe Kat, did I forward the email to everyone about? Well, there was something the about. Terms. I don't remember. Um, the, the town manager needs to upgrade everyone's um, terms, to be honest. Yeah. Um, they're slightly outdated. But uh, design review board. Let me go to the page. I, th um, I thought they voted on them at the town council. Did it's not update? the town council. It's actually the town administrator for this board. Yeah, we're, we're uh, appointed. Oh, yeah, I'm, so it was it on the. Uh, it was like on the. Erica, was, yeah, you have one more year at least. Yeah. Oh, you have one more year. <laughs> you can do it, Erica. Can, <laughs> yeah, I'll do it for a year. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Great. Well, so no. I guess, I, I watched the council meeting and on the consent form, the design review board was listed uh, as one of the committees that they uh, that Paul must have brought forth. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was. Oh, I'll take a look at that. Yeah, it was mentioned. And, and then I got nervous because sometimes the council really gets tough on people in the yeah. committee. So I thought, oh my God. Oh, wow. Nobody paid any attention to us. So, okay, I'll hand the gavel, the virtual gavel, over to you, Erica. Are Speaking you... of virtual, are we going to stay in this format? For it's like um, I think it's uh, valid until uh, maybe April of 2023. It's either April or March, and then we'll mm -hmm. probably have the same conversation then. Um, <laughs> So that's the state legislative body, and then uh, Governor Baker signed into uh, extension to the Act of 2020. Um, so we'll be able to meet remotely until then, and then I guess the state would have to make another decision if they want to make that permanent or not. Yeah. 
Um, did we want to make a motion uh, about this um, election oh. of, okay. of um, Eric? I move. I will move that we uh, elect Eric Azikos as chair of the Design Review Board for a one-year term. Do you want the one year in there, or you just want forever? Sure. Yeah, that's great. No, one year, <laughs> one year at a time. <laughs> You'll never get out of here, Erica. <laughs> <laughs> a second. Okay, moved and seconded. All in favor? Signify. Aye. Any Aye. Anybody opposed? Okay, very good. You're officially the chair of the design review board. A prestigious Ooh. and oh, wow. I'm gonna have to learn how to read that long <laughs> intro. Yeah. 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 Blah, Actually, blah, Catherine, blah. could you email that to me? Um oh I don't your know your intro. I Oh, if you don't, I, I actually want to take a look at it and I think it could be it maybe in, in shorter. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so before the next meeting, um, Erica, I can I'll I'll send you an updated version to that. Yeah, because given that some of that has changed about the yeah. Uh, yeah so okay. And then I did have meeting minutes from July seventh. Um which were really, uh, I don't know if you recall, I sent you emails um, about the, the, the um, about each of those applications. I, I would have to right. actually yeah, pull up, they were quite, they were, I felt pretty quite thorough. So I have. Yeah, yeah then, I read through and didn't have any changes, but if other people need time. I kind of had to refresh my memory just now of, so what you did review was uh, for Esther Kent family, she's like starting um, a family law and mediation office mm -hmm. at 17 Kellogg Ave. That was one of them. And then there was one for, uh, it's like a new bank, m &T Bank at 25 East Pleasant Street. Right. I forget what bank is there now, but they're, yeah, they're, they're re, re, they branding. merged in branding. Yeah. And then, and then the town of Amherst for the dog park. Right. Um, and I will uh, like to say that they um, did take all your recommendations, uh, the town did for the dog park and the signage. And um, if you do go there, you'll notice that they do have the signs as presented. They're temporary. They just needed to get some stuff up there and they're gonna work on um, modifying that and returning to the board. Um, so pro probably like in the winter or the spring. So I just wanted to make note of that. But they did put in that little whatchamacallit. Uh, the pavilion. Really, yeah. Oh, did they? Yeah. 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 Right there. It must have been ready to go. That's right. Must probably it happened are. really quickly. <laughs> yeah, right. That's the first well, thing. It's I, good. I mean, the, the park is a, a real gift. I mean, it's it's a it's great. Yeah. I wish I had a dog so I could take it there. I got to get you one. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a cat. I don't <laughs> probably survive five minutes in the dog park. So, anything else, Maureen? That's all. I I don't think I was present. I think I was not. Present yeah, I don't think you were there. Morning, so I didn't review. Yeah, I think only Erica and I could approve those minutes. Um, Even yeah. though you weren't there, you could if you did get a chance to read them. Or... Would you like for me to? Uh, sure. I mean, do you need me to, or what, is it not necessary? Uh, I think you do technically need at least three votes. We could hold off till next time, or okay. Okay. Was well, there anybody else who was present that? No. Still Tom was. Just Tom Eric was here. not Tom? here this time, though. Tom was at that meeting. Yeah. Those. Yeah. Tom and yeah, the three of us. So maybe it'd be better for him to review them. Yeah. 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 Okay. Let, yeah. We'll just hold All off. Hold off. Yeah. And then, um, oh, and then one other thing, because you'll most likely see it, the these signs uh, if you're in downtown, is I think it's yeah Bank of America right at the main intersection of the Pleasance and Amity Street in Maine, and they put up these. Um, they kind of look like murals, but they're not. They're like uh, vinyl, and I think they like take some sort of like like uh, it's like a adhesive onto the brick. They're giant signs. Um, and they're temporary and, um, and temporary means three weeks and they're on all sides of the brick. I wish I took a photo because they are quite large. So you'll get hmm. their eye catching. So in if you see them, you'll be like, why didn't they come through here? So, uh, if for things that are temporary, um, 
they don't need to go through the board. Um, but if they were permanent signs, then they would. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. Seeing them yet. Okay. Well, then, um, given as my last official duty, <laughs> I declare the meeting adjourned. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Thank you for your service, Catherine. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. You never know. You may come around meeting. again. <laughs> <laughs> There you yeah. go. Have a great evening, everyone. Okay, thanks, Marie. Bye. Thank you.